people of Christchurch and Canterbury Province. Eugenie Sage. A profoundly sad and shameful day in this House to be here considering the third reading and final stages of the Environment Canterbury Temporary Commissioners and Improved Water Management Bill. Mr Speaker, we are here as Members of Parliament because New Zealanders voted for us and voted for our parties. We are only here because people were able to exercise that fundamental democratic right to vote. And yet this House is considering legislation which denies that right to vote to elect their regional council to over 400,000 Cantabrians. Mr Speaker, this bill itself is a mere four pages long, but its effects are profound because it extends the Principal Act, which has the same euphemistic and inaccurate title for another three years. So that means that Cantabrians are going to be denied their de regional democracy and their right to vote for six long years. Now, Mr Speaker, Mrs Wagner said that Environment Canterbury was struggling, that people had lost confidence in the Council. How did the government know that people had lost confidence when it didn't ask anyone except Naitahu and the 10 Canterbury mayors? There was no public consultation. The agency that had lost confidence in the council was Irrigation New Zealand. And one of the reasons it had lost confidence in the council was because the council had increased the minimum flow in the Waimakariri River to better sustain that river's health and functioning and Irrigation New Zealand didn't like it because it impacted on proposals to take more water out of the river. That's who lost confidence. It was the irrigators, not the people of Canterbury. Mr Spe and the 10 mayors, and they will be review re reviewing that now with government proposals for unit trees in Canterbury. Mr Speaker, this is an indefensible bill, and that's been quite obvious in the short speeches we're hearing from government members and the very short calls that government MPs took during the committee stages. And it's indefensible, and that's obvious because the minister failed to take any calls to answer requests from several opposition members to answer questions that we were asking. So government members gave up. They know that there's no justification for this bill. They know that they can't speak truthfully about the reasons for this bill. They know that the excuses given by the ministers of local government and environment are spurious, those reasons being the earthquake, the need for stable governance. But it's strange how that doesn't affect the ability of the Christchurch City Council, the Waimakariri and Selwyn District Councils to get on with working with their communities and representing their citizens in major decisions about earthquake recovery, albeit constrained substantially by Sarah's sweeping powers. The real reason for this bill, Mr Speaker, is to facilitate more irrigation and more dairy cows on the Canterbury Plains and elsewhere. Central Plains Irrigation Scheme, Trust Powers Irrigation Scheme for the Rakaia River and Lake Coleridge, and that's because irrigation and more cows, more dairying, is a key part of this government's tired and unimaginative apology for an economic plan, if it could be called that. And that plan, Mr Speaker, is to continue with a frontier-style mentality of increasing cow numbers, increasing milk production, without thinking about the cost of that to the environment and to other sectors of the economy, such as tourism, food processing and other industries which require clean water. So that's why, Mr Speaker, this bill is proceeding. And it's proceeding against the advice of the government's own appointed commissioners that there should be a transitional council which would have a mix of elected councillors and appointed members. So there's no substantive reason for the bill except to promote irrigation. We haven't heard yet from national members the um, mistruths and inaccuracies that they have uh, promoted in the past when we've debated the bill, that ECAN didn't have a regional plan when in fact there was a natural resources regional plan since 2010 guiding consent decisions. 
We haven't heard this yet, but I'm sure we will, that the Council wasn't processing consents in a timely manner. The uh, former Minister, Nick Smith, loved to talk about that when, in fact, if he'd looked at the statistics in 2010-11, 80% of the resource consents were being processed um, by the Council within the statutory deadlines. And there was a total failure by the government to recognise that Environment Canterbury was dealing with more um, permits, applications for water permits, than the rest of uh, all of New Zealand's other regional councils. So it was doing that without any help from uh, the government in the form of national policy statements or national um, standards. So, Mr Speaker, this bill and what it represents is part of the profound changes that this government is making to the relationship between central government and local government. And this bill is one of the worst examples of that and most draconian examples by denying people the right to vote. But, Mr Speaker, National doesn't trust local government. It doesn't trust Cantabrians to elect councillors who would promote irrigation and sign off on a very weak um, regional policy statement and even weaker land and water plan, which is what the commissioners are doing. Because it's those weak statutory documents under the RMA that will allow irrigation to flourish and the environment to deteriorate. National's whole attitude to local government, which this bill um, highlights, is very different from that of previous governments. National doesn't seem to recognise that local government is not a branch office of central government. It doesn't recognise that local councillors are elected by their local communities and derive their mandate from that exercise of that democratic right. That local communities pay rates and therefore are entitled to elect their representatives to make decisions about how those rates are spent. This bill cuts right across that relationship. So Cantabrians are paying $84 million annually to the regional council but have no councillors to represent them. And as others have noted, there's the ultimate indignity of Cantabrians paying the salaries of the commissioners rather than central government paying those salaries even though it appointed them. Mr Speaker, last year we saw National take an axe to the Local Government Act. It substantially increased the power of the Minister of Local Government to interfere with councils to appoint Crown observers, Crown managers, Crown review team and commissioners, so that in future with other councils around New Zealand we won't need special legislation like the Principal Act and this bill in order for the government to intervene and appoint commissioners. It now has the powers in the Local Government Act to do that. And, Mr Speaker, today we had the very disturbing proposals of the Minister for the Environment to attack the core of the Resource Management Act, the way in which sustainable management is defined, and to abrogate yet more powers from councils to central government, because those proposals would give the Minister the power to direct what councils should put in their plans, to direct the outcomes that those plans um, should promote, so this is all about concentrating and centralising power in Wellington and specifically power in the Beehive. And the, this ECAM bill is one of the worst examples of that. Mr Speaker, in a healthy democracy, you have the exercise of power and authority subject to a range of checks and balances. When government is distributed to local government, as well as having checks like the judiciary, robust select committees, and we have uh, government responsibilities um, distributed, then you've got a healthy democracy because local government is one of those important checks on central government. Yet this national government, with this bill, with its proposals today, with its changes to the Local Government Act, is wanting to centralise power and ministers be able to dictate what local government does. And that is despite, Mr Speaker, in this country, local government raising a good deal more of its revenue than occurs in many countries overseas. So, Mr Speaker, this bill is a profound attack on democracy, but it sits with a suite of measures that this government is taking to cut across local government and to centralise power and undermine democracy generally. Jackie Dean.